Fake it till you make it, son. The point of the video today, guys, was brush your teeth. What's up, guys? We are coming to you from our apartment's balcony. I'm gonna go for a walk today around Tirana, Albania. I'm probably gonna walk over to the new bazaar and we're gonna discuss how to get toxic people out of your life because you can't have people that are dragging you down if you want to be successful, if you want to travel, if you wanna change something in your life. Step one is to surround yourself with people who are trying to do something. Brush your teeth. Yo, it's the Lamard Sanford of expat relocations, travel blogging, and teaching you how to take care of your dental. Hey, now, look, begging ain't gonna help you now. You might as well get up from there. <laughs> Anyways, we are walking along in Tirana, Albania. Beautiful day, perfect weather. We're gonna go for a stroll, have a discussion. We're gonna go see what it looks like we're heading up to the old bazaar. And we're gonna teach you how to live your life there, nephew. All right, guys, so we are cruising. We're gonna go have a stroll. It's a quiet week, weekday in the evening. It's probably about six o'clock. Um, pretty close to perfect weather. Um, I gotta say guys, in, like climate wise, I have never been happier than here in Albania. I mean, the weather here is just perfect in the summertime. I mean, like coming from the tropics from so many years, living in a tropical environment, a big Asian mega city in the tropics, this is an invited change. So how did I get here? For those of you who are just finding the video, um, I started out doing a uh, little bit of TEFL teaching in Vietnam. You can go back through all the old videos. You can find a lot of content on this. Um, I got a pretty long record of uh, everything we've been through and done all on the YouTube. So essentially, uh, you know, I started out kind of helping people find jobs. I realized that after a while, mad people were asking me like, how to, you know, how do I get a job in Vietnam or how do I this or how do I that? And I started thinking, well, you know, maybe I can make some money with this. And I initially started charging something like a hundred bucks to help people find jobs. You know, fast forward three years in a pandemic, I helped over 300 people come into Vietnam, uh, set people up, open businesses, help families come in, help people come into China. Uh, it's just amazing how it all happened. And, you know, this is something that, ha you know, I, I didn't necessarily plan it. I just kind of DIY and went with the flow, man. I just kept making videos and trying to do, you know, do my little thing. And after a while, it sort of just happened, man, you know? And I'll tell you a big part of that, a big part of, of me being able to do that was to kind of change the way I thought. And changing the way I thought also involved kind of changing who I was chilling with. Um, like when I was in America growing up, a lot of times the kind of people that I would associate myself with were not necessarily people that had any real plans. I mean, the mentality sometimes in these type of environments is not always like very uh, conducive to progress, you know? And I love some of the I grew up with and I love some of the people I hung out with when I was in the States, but ultimately I needed to create an environment for myself where I was gonna most likely be successful. So I have like kind of made a conscious effort to just surround myself with people that have something to offer. Um, now that sometimes is hard because whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend, there's a lot of people out there. And sometimes they're blood, it makes it even harder, you know? But you can still, you know, kind of decide what's important to you, you know? And at the end of the day, nobody can decide that but you. You know, for some people, uh, friendship bonds, uh, family, you know, those type of things are strong. You know, but that doesn't always mean that they're healthy or they're productive. 
and you can still love somebody and not necessarily need to be around them all that much. Like I got a lot of friends in the States that are good people, but ultimately they're not really trying to progress. They're not interested in doing much. You know, the height of their ambition is like a hustle or a small time racket. And you know, I find that misery tends to love company. You know, people tend to surround themselves with, you know, the type of people that they want that reflects sort of what they believe, you know, and how they feel and understand the world, you know, and they want you to feel the way they feel. And I think it's, it's a little bit like of a toxic thing, man, you know, like if you surround yourself with people who are not really trying to do shit and they don't really have like a strategy, I mean, ultimately you're kind of creating that for yourself, you know? Yo, what's up with it there, nephew? So yeah, let me teach you how to live. Anyways, um, yeah guys, at the end of the day, um, it's, it, it's impossible for you to move forward if, if you're always thinking in, in a very confined kind of way, like, you know, like this is the only thing that's possible for me. And I've definitely seen that a lot, especially when I was teaching English out in Vietnam, is a lot of got caught up in that TEFL teaching, like that's the, height of their ambition that's the best they will ever do and I'm not knocking them but like for me it wasn't really all about that like teaching English was like a stepping stone for me to try to do something bigger in my life and you know I was able to put something together without having a whole lot of you know money or experience or whatever really I kind of just threw it together you know just based on you know what I saw was needed in the market and if I was around a lot of the people that I, I knew when I was in the States and when I was especially on the streets as a kid, uh, a lot of the people that I knew, like even when I had money or I had a hustle that was making money, a lot of times I was the only that had it. Or somebody else I knew, you know, maybe I could trust them, but I knew how bad they would be with the money. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where like when I was younger, I was always looking for people to partner with to, to share ideas and to come up with, you know, something to f you know, elevate ourselves. And there was times where I had dough. And like, realistically, I could have done things. But I very often was surrounded by nobody else who had any real clear ideas. And they didn't really have any money of their own. So it became kind of like a situation where, you know, here I was, I was trying to do more than what I was, you know, expected to be. And I didn't really have the right type of people around me. So for a lot of years, I wasn't really getting the kind of knowledge and the kind of information that I needed. But once I put together my own little operation, once I had my own little consulting business going, once people saw that it started to produce and make money, man, everything changed. You know, um, it was just one of those things like in the beginning, people were giving me ideas, but I was still kind of narrow minded. I didn't really fully understand like even what I was doing, you know, and like it, it's really easy to kind of get stuck with that way of thinking. So the point is, guys, is that if you're surrounded by people who aren't doing anything, it's very unlikely that you're not going to do anything. And the first step to kind of getting that kind of negativity out of your life is to recognize that it's there. Um, you know, if, you, if you're surrounded by people who are constantly kind of your ideas or trying to convince you something isn't going to work, you want to be around people that are positive, you know, and it sounds like a cliche, man, but it's not. like you want to be around people who have ideas of their own man you know who who are trying to elevate themselves and trying to f have some kind of a vision you know this is this is a completely different kind of mentality and you don't want to be surrounded by people who you know for them you know it's all about bringing you down to where they are you know that's why you see internet trolls that's why you see so many haters out there is there's so many people out there who are just content being nobody you know 
And hey, you know, for them, maybe that's okay, you know? Look at this bridge thing, guys. Hey, this thing's cool. So, um, yeah, I love this town, man. All over the place with the chitter chatter today. But a lot of people say they like it, so. You know, they like these videos where I try to give good advice and where I can show a little bit of the interesting places that I'm living and getting to chill. And the only reason why any of this is possible, guys, is through kind of hard work, surrounding myself with people who deserved, you know, loyalty rather than people who are just there to be seen with you. Like you'll see, guys, if you ever start making money or having any kind of success, you will definitely see that there'll be a lot of who just come out of the woodwork and you know they very often aren't talking about themselves but suddenly they're interested in you or what you're making or how you're going to invest your money you know it's amazing you see it because there's been times in the past where I've had more dough and you know this is not the first time I've had dough in my life I wasn't mentally mature the last few times and this time I have a better head on my shoulders but nonetheless you learn the lessons, man. It just repeats itself. I wanted to peep this little back alley here and see what this is. It looks like not much, but how interesting is this little alley, guys? Look at this place. This is pretty cool. It looks like it's a dead end. Sometimes they go through, but this one is a dead end. Kind of back over by that stone bridge we started at. All right, well, that was cool. All right, so yeah, guys, listen, I don't give a it's a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a family member. If they're if they're trying to bring you down, if they have an attitude that toxic, you need to dead that. You know, uh, like I said in the in the last clip, I was talking a little bit about how like once I started showing people that I was capable, I attracted other capable people. But you're also going to attract parasites, so you always have to be aware of people's intentions. You know, uh, very often in life, people are looking to get something for free. You know, and unfortunately, you know, we don't live in a perfect little uh, utopia where everything in life works out, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you end up linking up with the wrong business partner, the wrong girlfriend or, you know, boyfriend or whatever the case may be. And you get your life destroyed, you know, and sometimes these mistakes can be costly, expensive, also stressful, you know. And one way you can really eliminate that is just by cutting out anybody, man. And the second that you feel sketched, dead that. This is your body and your mind are trying to tell you something. And you know, I found in my life that when I don't listen to my instincts, almost always it's dead. Almost always there's a problem, and my body, my my mind, my gut, it's trying to say, bro, something's not right. Every time I haven't listened to it, I paid a price. What up, what up, what up? So yeah, man, listen, like I said, if somebody is talking about you, if somebody is trying to tell you that there's something you can't do or you can't accomplish, or that you need to worry too much about the future, all they're doing is they're imposing their own insecurities on you. And you gotta remember that not everybody is the same, you know? I've been in positions where I've been you know, I've had people who try to hustle me, who try to get over on me, and it doesn't work necessarily. And then I've met people where the same thing that they tried with me worked with them, you know? So you gotta peep game, man. People are always gonna try to, you know, see what they can get out of you, you know? And what you wanna do is you wanna try to find people who really have more to offer you than what they would benefit from knowing you. So for example, like, like people I try to keep around me, they're generally exceptionally good at something. You know what I mean? They have something they're passionate about, whether it be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, whether it be video editing, whether it be digital marketing or whatever the they got their hands in it. Maybe their ambition is to be a digital nomad like myself. Maybe their ambition is to do Bitcoin or some kind of a crypto business, right? I mean, there is no like one way to live, but without any passion, man, it ain't, you know, nothing is really worth nothing. Like, and if, if you've got people in your life that are content flipping burgers, well, listen, I'm happy for them. But for me, that would drag me down. Like, I really gotta be surrounded by people who are doing 
because I'm busy. I'm at a point in my life where I'm so busy, I barely have time for my wife, and if I'm gonna have time for anybody else, there's gotta be some sort of a purpose to it. They've gotta bring something to the table that's interesting and that's gonna elevate me, you know? And in turn, I try to do the same exact thing. I try to bring my skill set and maybe we can accomplish something, you know? Because I believe for sure that we're stronger together. And if someone has a good idea, you guys should always holler at me on the, on the Facebook fan page. Um, you can always reach me on the Facebook, you can reach me on the Instagram, but the Facebook is better. Um, I'm always looking for people to cooperate. I'm always looking for people to make videos with. You know, I'm the kind of dude who like, I'll work with anybody. I don't care if your channel is big, small, because I try to put that out because that's the energy that I want. I want to get that same energy back. You know, whereas there's a lot of people that'll, they'll link up, they'll talk about collaboration, but then ultimately it'll just be some <laughs> Like I've told the story before, I worked with this one blogger from China and he was doing ESL stuff in China. I was doing ESL stuff in Vietnam. We showed the dude mad hospitality. But then as soon as we headed out to China, which was actually him, he had convinced us to do it. You know, come to find out he's talking to us. He's trying to bring us down. And it's kind of like, damn, bro. Like, how do you go through life being so fake? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, for me, like, it's, it's just, I don't have the time. If they're not authentic, if they don't have good intentions, um, yeah, to go. <laughs> because bro, one day you're gonna blink your eyes and you're gonna be 40. <laughs> so you need to have a game plan. And the time is ticking. If you're sitting around with the homies just smoking weed, and listen, I don't disparage people for smoking weed because hey, a lot of smart people smoke weed. But if you're just chilling on the block, smoking weed and drinking all day, and you don't have any real ambition, I mean, you know, life will go by so quick and you never know how fast you'll wake up in a situation that you don't even recognize, you know? One day you're 60, man, you know? And it goes super, super fast and you don't even know it happened, man. Like you blink your eyes and a decade went by. So, peep game, guys. Beautiful day. I'm chilling in the Mediterranean. Um, so you're doing pretty well. I actually got money for in a way that was legit and was something that's sustainable and that can evolve. And when I was in America, that would have been the most alien idea to me ever. Like the height of my ambition was working as a nightclub bouncer because the, or, and doing like little, you know, hustles on the side. But that's because everybody around me, that was the world they were living in. You know, uh, I was really pretty sure I was unhappy, but I was always bouncing around America. I was going from, always going from city to city. I never really understood why I was never happy. And I just started to realize I was in like this repeat loop where I was just constantly going in a circle. You know, I would move to a different city, but I would always do the same thing. I would always be surrounded by the same type of people. And it took, it took like I said, you know, having a little bit of success changing the way I think, challenging myself, making myself ask myself hard questions about making money, about what I ultimately want to do. And you know, that is always easy for people. And if everybody around you is telling you, ah, nah, son, don't trip, everything's good, then, I mean, it's very easy to not trip. But if you don't change, and you don't evolve, and you don't surround yourself with people who have ambition, you're never gonna do anything. I mean, because after a while, people just get tired of hearing people talk about what the to do. It's like, if you're gonna do something, do it, you know? <laughs> Demonstrate it, <laughs> you know? Um, and I see it online, it's funny, man, because like I do a lot with digital marketing, so I'm up in a lot of Facebook groups, and you get these guys, these, these troll guys, talking about they have mansions, and this and that, and they're this or that. And it's like, yo, son, if you was doing all that you wouldn't have to talk about it. All right, so we are getting closer to the, to the new market 
I'm gonna go take a walk and see what's going on in the new market. And, uh, you know, see what we see. It's in a beautiful evening. Sunset's late here in Tirana, so you really get these incredible stretches of like perfect weather in the summer and night. It's amazing. And uh, honestly, guys, I'm really, really happy we ended up here in Albania. I like this place a lot. Now, I don't know if ultimately I'll live here for the rest of my life because there's a big world to see, but this is a very, very, very good place. And, you know, had I stayed with the kind of mentality that I had when I was younger, I would never have been here. You know, uh, even when I left New Zealand, I was still sort of thinking in the same way and kind of like still stuck with thinking that this bouncing thing was like what I knew how to do. It was really a self-esteem thing, guys. Like I couldn't imagine myself doing something different than what I had always done, you know, because everybody I knew had always been in that world. Um, and like I've said before in other videos, the bouncing thing, you know, I love some of the, the people I was associated with over the years and they're good people. Uh, some of them went on to do some amazing things, but a lot of them are still kind of like stuck in that in that club mentality. And I just never really, I, you know, after a certain point, man, like I liked going out uh, when I was younger. I liked the electronic music that was going on in New York and the scene and stuff. But after a while of just working in clubs, I watched it become very commercialized and it lost a lot of its charm, you know? Um, it just became like a job and like a dangerous job and a job where you, you were constantly doing kind of gray area, shady things to get by. And I just, I, you know, once I had the opportunity to teach English, you know, I didn't really like it at first, but I kind of knew it was better, you know? I mean, my brain had like matured enough to recognize that. And like, I had a lot of that, you know, oh, you know, over the years of my, making my videos, talking mad talking about how I was never gonna be successful or never gonna be able to do anything. And like, you know, I'm some egg and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like year after year, man, they wanna see me fail. Year after year, I'm not failing, you know? It's just getting better and bigger. And like, you know, I used to like to argue with trolls because it's really good for engagement. It gets a lot of people to watch the videos. But I started to realize after a while that I just don't have time for it. I don't have time for these people in my life, this negative energy, because that's what they need. They need that by negative energy is what like keeps their lives like having some meaning, you know? Um, for me, it's just not like that. Like I need to be around people who are doing good my business partner, super smart dude, digital nomad for years, very articulate. Like he really understands how, you know, the back end of everything works. You know, someone like that, good heart, you know, a loyal friend. I mean, I don't know. I just don't have time for really anything less. Yo, what up there, stepson? So this is the new bazaar. So we're gonna cruise and we're just gonna see where we go. Um, yeah, I mean, again, another one of my rambly advice videos where I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just kind of freestyling it. Um, I like to pick a topic that is popular that for like the self-help stuff that people are looking for and then kind of wipe, you know. <laughs> so, man, you got to look at it like this. Like you got a finite amount of time on the earth, right? You got a limited amount of time to do the things you want to do, whether that be, you know, financially, relationship wise, life experiences, whatever it is you're trying to accumulate, you know, you only got a limited time to do that. And if you're surrounded by who are not thinking about next week, there's no way you're going to get to next year. You feel me? Um, this is something that takes time. Everything is like making a diamond, man. You don't get something beautiful and perfect by just and, and kind of half ass like, I am hardly successful in terms of YouTube, you know, as in terms of being a YouTube channel. But where I am successful is I figured out the hack. I figured out that I can make really good money through using these social media platforms to offer my services rather than relying on the social media platforms themselves to pay me. I just created a hustle of my own and then I used the social media to flip that. And that's kind of like how we got to where we are today, you know? It's funny, like I applied like the NYC street game. I applied that 
ESL game and it just fit perfectly and then there was the natural evolution into consulting and like I said it's been hard for me too man like even even when I'm like dealing with like certain customers you know like they'll have sometimes very toxic mentalities you know and I'm getting paid so for me it's different like I approach it like I want to give them not just the advice and the contacts to get jobs and to get into different countries or to set up businesses. I also want to give them some of that life knowledge because I feel like, you know, some of it is mentorship, man. You got to like, you know, if you're working with somebody, they're your customer, they're having faith in you. You got to also give them the advice, man. It can't only be about business, you know, because everybody I've worked with, I want to see successful. Even the ones who kind of come out there and up or something happens. And guys, mad people go out to, to Vietnam or China and they get, they either or they life up, you know? It's definitely like a thing that happens, you know? But um, there's a lot of people who also go out there and do some real ambitious you know? Um, you want to be around the ones that are doing the ambitious You don't want to be on Boy Vienne in, in Saigon drinking beer with bar girls working in a public school because that's the height of your ambition. You want to be the one who's chilling with the startups, who's, who's the people that are out there to leverage their time to, to create businesses, you know, because man, you know, it's such a short amount of time you got to work with. Like, how can you have time for people that are like, I hate to say it, but like even family, like if family is trying to keep me from being successful or keep me from being happy, you, it's, you're dead to me. Like, and I grew up with a big Italian family, man. So like, I know these kind of traditions, you know, and, and like, it's definitely like, kind of a difficult thing to break especially if you're from you know like uh, a family that has roots back into a more traditional kind of society um you know but at the end of the day for me it's it's about being able to live the life that i want to live in the, the amount of time that i'm allowed to do so you know what i mean and if i don't have the right kind of people in my life even if i love them i you know they're gonna f me down they're gonna prevent me from being able to do the things that i truly want to do and man, you'll never get that time back. Like maybe if you're religious, you believe there's an afterlife, but I don't know, man. And like, I'm already getting closer to being fucking middle aged now. And that's crazy. I was never expecting to even be alive that long. And here I am walking in Toronto, Albania, got a good business going, got, uh, you know, a respectable reach in terms of my market from digital marketing, completely self-taught, didn't know how to do any of this. You know, just learn by doing it, um, you know, and I'm hardly rich, but I'm starting to feel like I'm getting a taste of being successful. And, you know, it's crazy because I never conform to their rules. I never conform to anybody else's way of thinking or understanding me. And there's a lot of people that look down on me, like even before I did the YouTube, and I'm not even talking about trolls, but like people in my life who just thought for sure, this mother is never gonna do nothing. You know, teachers, you know, and now, here I am, man. And like, I'm hardly rich, but I live an upper middle class lifestyle. I get to travel the world. I get to live in different countries. I, I do work really hard, but you know, I work for myself and you know, I've, I've created a niche in a, in a situation where, you know, lots of people wish they could do even close to what we've been able to do. So then why would I, you know, go waste even five minutes of my time on somebody who doesn't share those same kind of ambitions. You know, like if you don't have anything worth it in your life to fight for or strive for, then I just really don't have time to know you, you know? And it's not that I don't want to make new friends or do that, it's not. It's just that ultimately, you know, I got to leverage the amount of time in a day that I get, right? I get so many hours in a day. And where do I want to spend those hours? With people who are trying to help me and elevate me or with people who are trying to talk about nothing? What up, what up? So we trooping, we trooping. We're gonna go maybe into the square for, for a minute and see what we see. Um, 
Yo, I gotta say, man, Tirana is a nice lifestyle, guys. Um, earned this, man. Four and a half years doing this Southeast Asia stuff, man. And I love Southeast Asia, but you wanna talk about an unhealthy lifestyle. You know, there's pollution here, there's issues here. But man, you see these parks, guys? You see this open space? You cannot even compare this to Saigon. You know, <laughs> you, you know Bangkok, Saigon. I mean, these are great places. I love those towns, but it is nothing like the quality of life I've got out here, you know? And uh, I do believe that none of that would have been possible for me had I not, you know, kind of cut out some dead weight. And I gotta be honest, guys, like that's kind of what it is. A lot of in your life are kind of dead weight, you know? They're not talking about not ambitious to do And, you know, the most you're gonna see from them is like, you know, they'll always be around. Yeah, sure, but, you know, they're around, but they don't have no other choice because they're never gonna be never gonna accomplish And I think that's the important thing to remember when you're talking about like who to choose to put in your life. All right, let's go hit the square. It's possibly the perfect weather. Let's go, let's go see what everybody's doing. It's gonna be uh, probably a, another hour for sunset. So let's go see what we find trooping into the center of Tehran. See, this is, uh, this is the main public square, guys. So for those of you who don't know anything about Tehran, um, if you watch all the YouTube videos online, the travel videos, this is the square that they're always going to. Um, it's the central square. It's really nice. Big open space. Uh, they have a tent. We just talked to them the other day and they told us that we can get it as Americans. So um, they, the only thing is they don't have any of the ones I want. So we're going to probably go by the stadium over the weekend after we get a full week of jujitsu in. And if we've heard there's a chance we can maybe get the so we're gonna try to get that, but they will Americans, so that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, that means that travel to other parts of Europe are gonna be a lot easier. See, I don't know if you can see it up ahead, but that's the tent where they'll just anybody. Um, man, the square is gorgeous. Look at this, guys. So once again, we cruising in the square. Beautiful, beautiful evening. Um, sun just starting to go down. Doing that Toronto lifestyle. Brush your teeth. Not having no negative um, You know, I went through, like I said, I had a lot of trolls, man, in Vietnam that like hated me, like hated me, hated me. These guys became obsessed with me. I mean, I suspect that it's not hate, it's love, because you don't put that much attention into another man unless there's some kind of weird feelings happening that you're not addressing, but um, that's just my opinion. But, uh, you know, I feel like I've said this before when, I, when people ask me, like, what about trolls? And this guy said this about you or that about you. Um, I gotta be honest, it's just, I don't have the time for them. I don't have the time even for people who are nice people but have nothing to offer. Um, it just, there's just too much going on. There's too many things I'm still trying to do, um, you know, and anybody who I actually am going to dedicate time to in my life, like I said earlier, they need to bring something to the table, you know, um, being a good friendship, loyalty, these things are, are very important characteristics, but so is having some sort of ambition, having a, some sort of a goal, a plan, something that they are good in, that they're, that they're excited about. Um, you know, even if it's like that, like homegirl when we were in Saigon who rescues all those cats. Now that's not necessarily something to gain financial capital, but it's, it's a passion. And you know, I respect passionate people, you know, people who have nothing, you know, that's driving them in their life. It's, it's just that, you know, you really can't have that. You don't have time for that. You know, but I don't have time for that.
back beating the bricks, you know, walking and talking, teaching you how to brush your teeth and how to change your underwear, like raising you like I'm your father. So yeah, guys, listen, man, like it's, it's a hard one because, you know, there's all kinds of things in life that are unclear. And a lot of times we learn, we, you know, we experience things at an age where we're not either mentally or emotionally mature enough to process and to make the right choices. Now, this is something that's haunted me for sure. And I think it's the irony, the beautiful irony of age is that as you get older, you get smarter, you get more knowledge, only if you choose to learn. You know, but there's stupid old people too. But man, you get these experiences that change your perception, you know? And the joke of it all is that that's as your body starts to deteriorate, as you're not as young, as you start to have back problems or health problems, you know? It's kind of a, a comedy because when I was like 25 and I was indestructible, you know, powerlifting, eventually fighting Muay Thai, you know, I didn't give a f anything but my brain wasn't like developed enough to really understand the significance of the choices I was making uh, or to think about what my life could be and how I could accomplish things that I never dreamed that I could. But now it's funny, it's like I'm getting closer to 40 and I know there's a lot of things I'm missing and mistakes I'm making. I know there's a lot of procrastinating that I'm sure I do, but you know, at least I feel like now I'm kind of on the right path Whereas before, I was like running into the wall and wondering why the f hurt, you know? Like, yeah, I was physically strong. I could knock a m out, but I wasn't like emotionally and mentally strong, you know? I got very lucky. My 30s in many ways were very good for me. They're very educational. And, you know, I started to decide in my kind of, I would say my mid-30s that I just didn't want to be around anybody who wasn't like really somebody who care, either cared, like truly cared for my well-being or who had something really positive to offer. Because again, who you hang out with is an extension of you, you know what I mean? So how do you deal with toxic people in your life? You get them the f out of your life. You dead them. I don't give a f if it's your mom, your homeboy for 10 years, if they are not trying to help you elevate and want to see the best for you, then they don't really give a shit about you. And it's very easy to start thinking someone actually cares about you when they really don't. You end, ever end up in jail, you ever end up in a situation where you need a place to sleep or you need a job so you could feed your family, you're going to find out real quick who gives a about you and who doesn't, you know? And if you start to see success, you know, like I have in the last year or so, you're gonna be approached by a lot of people who have ideas, you know? And they're always gonna have an idea for how to spend your money or how to be around you and what they think they can gain from that. But there's also gonna be people that approach you that are positive. And it's very important that you listen to your instincts and that you try to surround yourself with only with people who have something to contribute to the conversation. What up, what up, what up there, stepson? So we're trooping across the main boulevard, headed back over towards the crib. We did a little bit of a walk through the town. We went over through the old bazaar. We went to Scandebeck Square. Now we're gonna go cruise back towards my neighborhood near the US consulate. Um, I gotta say guys, like I said previously, anybody who really cares about you wants you to be successful. And I don't just mean successful with money, I mean successful with whatever it is you choose to pursue in your life. Whatever gives your life purpose, you know what I mean? And for me, it's not coming to Southeast Asia and sitting in lady bars with, you know, a job I can skate by with. I don't know, I maybe want to leave a little something behind, you know? And maybe this whole is kind of my little footprint, you know? Like, all the will live on forever, man, you know? All the social media, all the stuff you create about yourself, this is the new time capsule, you know? And, you know, if I can be able to live the life that I want to live and have some measure of success while still kind of leaving something behind that I created for myself, well, I think then that's a beautiful thing. Like, and I don't have to be fake and I don't have to pretend to be somebody I'm not. I don't have to dress up and be a big shot. 
I can just be this weird dude from New York who gets himself into weird situations and ends up in weird places. And I'm like totally cool with that. Like that's like all I need, man. Like, you know, I just want to have an interesting life. Me and my wife both are very unconventional people. We want unconventional things. We live a very unconventional lifestyle. And for us, that's cool, you know? And I want to meet other people who are unconventional, who have good ideas, who are passionate about things, who are driven, you know? I don't want to meet my who are talking about like just irrelevant shit. I don't give a about celebrity culture. I don't give a about professional fighters. I don't give a about anything like that, man. Like, I'm just focused on how do I get from A to B to make my life better, to make the people that are in my life's lives better to make the friends that do contribute and do want to you know, see my well-being make their lives better. How can we, how can we do something as a whole? You know, and like it took a lot of years to recognize that a lot of people you think are your friends, they're not. They're not they don't have anything to offer you. you know, um, sitting around a bar and commiserating with a bunch of other who aren't really doing is not something that's going to bring you to your goals. You know, and for some other it's sitting around playing video games all day and getting high. Listen, man, if that's for you, then, you know, whatever. But I don't have time for that. Like, there are, I met, I had a customer. He was a famous gamer. Now, that's a different story. That, that guy leveraged his enjoyment of video games to make himself, like, you know, actual money and, and successful. And to get himself some measure of celebrity because that's what he wanted to do. Now, you got to respect that because even though I don't personally like playing games, I mean... I, that's passion, man, you know, and you got to respect a dude who thinks like that, you know, and I remember, you know, thinking as a kid, it was like I was, you know, I tried to play guitar, I wasn't particularly good at it, I tried to do a few things, and, you know, I just never really understood that, you know, when you, when you're young, it's like, man, you want and quickly, nothing happens quickly, man, you don't get good things in life easily, you know. don't get to achieve things that take years and years and years of work by taking shortcuts guys you know unless you're some kind of a idiot savant genius who can just do incredibly brilliant off the cuff you know but most people that's not the case most people it requires hard work you know the reason I'm able to do what I'm able to do and live the way I'm able to live is because I grind guys I put in work because I don't want to be a schlep getting by some manager at a job that I hate for like a low wage. I want, I want control of my destiny. And anybody who is going to hinder that or bring that down, they got to go. You, you know, I don't give a think you love this girl or this dude or whoever, you know, like, who, you know, this is my audience, you know, we mostly have dudes watching, but we, we have female viewers as well. And this applies to you guys too. Relationships should be mutually beneficial. They should make you a better, stronger, you know, person. You should complement each other. You should be constantly trying to build on each other. And if you're not trying to do that, if you're not encouraging that person to be healthier, better, to pursue their goals, then right there, that's you know, that's already a bad sign, you know. And that's the 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 start of kind of like a cycle where you're going to end up in the very least in a situation of mediocrity because you're going to be with somebody who doesn't challenge you or encourage you to do better and doesn't confront you when you don't so, yo so this is going to be the thing they turn the pyramid into so they have this crazy old pyramid from when they had the dictatorship and it's being turned into like a multi-use uh kind of like open space like this is the plan for it um want to talk about taking a negative and flipping it into a positive I mean that's a really cool idea I mean this place looks like it's gonna be awesome when they finish it um, so it was supposed to be I think a tomb for the former dictator and now you guys could correct me if I'm wrong about that but they're gonna turn it into uh, like this multi-use outdoor kind of uh, space and it's pretty cool um, I really like stories like that you know one thing I love about Tirana and uh, what I've seen in the Balkans in North Macedonia so far is just 
how much public space is, you know, is available to people to walk in public squares, public parks. I mean, this is something that really adds to quality of life, in my opinion. Um, you know, and I think it's great because I put my time in, I paid my dues. I lived in Saigon for a long, not a long, long time, because I got homeboys who lived there for like 15 years or longer, but I lived there for a pretty long time to where, you know, I definitely damaged my health. Um, I do love the country, but I definitely, you know, I, I definitely took years off my life living there. And now I'm getting the opportunity to live this lifestyle. And like I said, if I would have just stayed kind of like hanging around, bouncing in the clubs or, you know, working in strip clubs or music venues or whatever it is I had my hands in, you know, like, I don't think that this would have ever happened. I wouldn't be walking down this beautiful boulevard in the Balkans, you know, in this interesting country, doing these interesting things and being able to do so with some measure of independence. Now, I'm pretty f from rich, but I'm pretty, you know, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And, you know, it, it was not something that came easy, you know, like in the beginning, you know, a lot of people didn't take it seriously. Even people around me that I respect, you know, <clears throat> I didn't take it seriously. People would give me advice. They would tell me ways to do things better. And I just wasn't really like thinking on that level, you know, like my brain wasn't really like doing all that, you know. Um, it took a while before, you know, I started having like an actual strategy and like thinking that this was serious and that I need to professionalize, I need to invest in equipment. Because if you guys watch my first videos from Saigon, I was just making videos on my phone, editing them on shit, editors, the audio's all and mix matched, you know. Um, I didn't do that with SEO. Half the time I didn't even capitalize words that were supposed to be. So your boy went from nightclub bouncer, kind of doing bodyguard shit, kind of sketchy kind of hustles to teach her in the English in Vietnam even though I'm totally qualified you know you got to fake it till you make it son um, you know there's a, there is a strategy out there to make your life better you know you just don't know what the is yet and you got to take a little bit of time to kind of you know organize that I promise you whatever your ambition is you can accomplish it but you know, step one is anybody who's negative, they gotta go. Anybody who's not bringing money or bringing ideas or bringing loyalty and friendship, camaraderie, that gotta go, you know? And I don't mean just somebody to sit and listen to your problems. If, if someone's really your friend, they're gonna confront you for you bitching, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna tell you to look at yourself and to figure out how to make things better. Because if I care about somebody, I actually wanna see them get better. I don't wanna just be somebody who they talk to and they're like, you know, oh, okay, you want a, a shoulder to cry on. Well, that's fine. But then afterwards, we need to make a plan, <laughs> you know, otherwise you're going to keep doing the same thing and you're going to end up back on my shoulder every time. And it's like, do you want to change or do you just want to somebody to listen to you? Now, I know a lot of people just want someone to listen and that's fine, but I'm not your caseworker. You know, I need people who are around me who are going to like, you know, if I respect you and I have admiration for you, at some point you need to take, uh, take it a step up yourself. Like, you know, many years, man, I have offered places to stay to friends, given them you know, opportunities. I've had friends who've returned the favor and given me opportunities, you know, and you find out who really gives a shit when you got nowhere to go or when you don't have a job and you really need some work. You know, that's where you really truly find out who's a real friend, you know, and, you know, when it comes to them wanting to see you be successful when it comes to people who are telling you no bro you got to change you because right now you're headed for destruction or like you know like you got to do something positive because your life is just not going nowhere i mean that's the kind of friends i want i don't want people who are just going to be like yeah 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 you know like because man like you think you're going to ever be able to travel the world you think you're going to ever have financial freedom have a relationship that you're happy with or, or be successful with women, be successful with a project, an ambition, or if you're a woman, be successful with men, or whatever the or whatever the to grapefruits, you know, like, but it all comes from being happy with yourself and with being around people that are gonna try to make you better, you know? Um, you know, it's like with my, with my wife, you know? 
I love her to death, but I constantly push her to, to grow. I constantly encourage her to take on new skills, to learn new things, to focus on physical fitness. Um, you know, I try to discourage things that I see as destructive because I give a shit and because I want to see her have a good life and have a stable, happy life. And she does the same for me. And for me, that's the sign of a healthy relationship. You know, like neither of us are perfect and the other one is there to make sure that we don't much, you know? You don't, you don't want somebody who's like aware how damaged you are and they're not interested in helping because then what's the point of having them in your life? Like you're just not, you're gonna go, I've seen so many relationships, people stay married 15, 20, 30 years and they just keep each other down. Like, you know, it's like, they, you know, for whatever reason, they're both, their mentalities are so sick and toxic and they don't have time to, to challenge themselves because they fill their time with irrelevancies, like, you know, either buying things online or celebrity culture or whatever else, you know, maybe even some of them have financial success, but they're just so unhappy in other aspects of their life. Like, you know, for me, success is holistic, man. It's not just about money it's about the lifestyle that i want to live um, having the people in my life that contribute to it positively having a community because i think the most important thing in the world is community you know and how do you build a positive and strong community for yourself you know you can't have people coming around that are going to be tired destructive you know this type of thing what's up boys <laughs> And, you know, you got to focus on something that in your life that's good, you know, like the, because life is short. And if everybody around you is doing good things and they're positive and they're not letting you destroy yourself. Well, man, I mean, you already are headed for success, you know, like, I mean, think about it, man. You look at communities that thrive and they support each other, you know, um, that's why having money in local economies is important. That's why small businesses are important because everybody can support each other. And what I found when I was doing a lot of this, uh, this travel blogging stuff is I know I hit a nerve and I make some of these sensitive, but a lot of these men, they are just haters. They are sad, depressed haters who just want to bring everybody down to their level and be miserable. And you know, like you really can't even waste five minutes of your time with these people. You know, you, you have to focus on what you're doing and with other people that are trying to do good things, man. And, you know, when you look at like any kind of uh, industry, any kind of practice that you want to get involved in, you know, you're never going to become what you want to become if you're constantly focusing on disparaging other people, talking down to other people, trying to diminish other people, focusing all that energy that could be going to con being constructive, to doing something good yourself you know I mean there's about 10 million you could be doing other than focusing on other people you know now if you have somebody who motivates you that's different you know you get somebody who's a motivating kind of person you put your energy into that you know they can be like a beacon for you and that's a positive thing but there's a lot of mother out there that they just focus on people for all the wrong reasons gossip or negativity or jealousy blah 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 there's so much of that going on in the world misshaped priorities people put you know valuing material things over human relationships people who see life as just me 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 you know and what suits my interests and like you know having a, an attitude that's just completely destructive What up, what up? So we are in Mother Teresa Square, right next to the Air Albania Stadium. We're about to cruise back towards, the, towards my neck of the woods. That is the coin center up there in front of us. It's one of the bigger, taller buildings here in Tirana. Um, so anyway, the point of the video today, guys, was brush your teeth. Now, the point of the video today was honestly, you know, like, I don't care if it's family, if it's your old lady, if it's your dog. You need to be around people who want what's best for you. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's about money or about other things, but you want to be around people who have goals, who have ambition, who want to see you happy. 
even if they're more simple and they, they want different things than you, that's fine, man. Not everybody has to have the same ambition. But you have to have something that drives you, man, because what's the point of being alive? What's the point of any of this? This whole crazy thing we call Earth with these crazy species that, you know, somehow has built all these complex cities and, you know, what the is this? You know, this is like a question people have been asking for a long time, you know? And, and, and why does it, what is death? Like, why does that happen? You know what I mean? So we've got all these things going on. We know we have a limited amount of time, which is a curse in many ways. And here, you know, we have a choice. We can choose to be happy and to have the life that we want to have, or we can choose to be miserable and to break, make other people miserable. And a lot of that just starts with kind of who you choose to be around. So, you know, when I was young, I didn't have much of a family, so I was very mixed up with trying to find family on the streets and in friends and stuff like that and you know I put a lot more stock into friendships than they were worth you know a lot of these people ended up being dumb you know but I was searching for that community and I was surrounded by a lot of negative people who really it was very hard for me to see that you know um, to see the kind of reinforcement and the kind of understanding that you know that I needed at the time you know but now as I've gotten older and I say this a lot I you know mad people talk meals they talk young people I find this generation to be much less racist, much less hateful, much less violent, much more open-minded, and much more like interested in moving forward than my generation was in many ways. And because I'm on the cusp, I'm like millennial by one year, but Generation X if I was just one year older. So I'm really on the cusp of it. And what I see today, I know there's some stuff that's kind of stupid and weird, and I'm like not into the woke thing. I think it's a distraction, but. I do think overall that there are some very positive things that come from youth and from believing in, you know, things can change and the world can be better and just having that kind of mindset. And I feel like the younger generation has that a lot. Now, it, obviously all societies, any generation has things about it that are totally f you know, but there's also things that I see this generation doing that give me a lot of hope. So, you know, um, I think when I was younger, the world was a lot less tolerant. It was a lot less open-minded. And I think what's happening now, in some ways, is a good thing. You know, people are becoming more open. They're becoming more kind of connected to each other. And now you have nefarious government actors and organizations that are using this, you know, for social control. Like, you know, Facebook's working with the NSA, YouTube, all these big social media companies. But what you also have is a sharing of ideas across nations, across oceans. And, you know, that's something that's in really entirely a new thing, you know, and I think it's quite a good thing ultimately. And I think that, you know, information sharing and sharing good ideas and being able to connect. Like I imagine when I was a kid, if I had been able to connect with people who were in a different frame of mind than what I was surrounding myself with, I think maybe I would have probably ended up in a very different situation. But, you know, when they, it's kind of a cliche, they say you're a product of your environment. But in reality, man, that's true, you know, like you are what you grow up around. And, you know, with the Internet, with the sharing of ideas, you know, you can create a bit of an echo chamber where you just hear from people who agree with you. But you can also kind of, you know, share information, learn, progress, connect with people who have similar kind of way of thinking to you. I think there's a million positive things that, that are happening with this ability for us to communicate on these medians. And like, you know, obviously the commercial side of it, they're going to try to dumb it down, they're going to try to control it. But I like the idea that I could reach somebody who's living in Europe or reach somebody who's living in, you know, a different country like in Africa and, you know, South America and, you know, and, and that person can like connect with my kind of like ideas and my sense of humor and like even though we're from like completely different worlds we have some things that we can find commonality with, you know. Um, I mean, if it wasn't for the connectivity of the world, you know, I wouldn't have stumbled on the, the, the business I've created. I wouldn't be walking here in Albania on this beautiful evening, you know, in this perfect weather, you know. I mean, all this happened because of, you know, not accepting what was laid out for me and choosing to dedicate my time to things that were making me better and not to people who were, you know, destructive or degenerate or trying to bring me down, you know? But I gotta say, guys, um, and I stress this in all my videos, 
you got to change you. Ain't nobody can do it for you. There's nobody who is going to come out there and they're going to fix you, man. You need to fix your self. You know, whether it's relationships, whether it's, you know, being successful, whether it's procrastination, you know, we all get lazy. We all have lifestyles that we want to live, but you got to kind of make sure you allocate time and you can't be allocating time to people who aren't bringing nothing to the table. Like, I mean, if, if somebody is just somebody you chill with, like, why wouldn't you just spend that time doing something more productive? Like, I don't need to be around my just to be around is, you know, like, I don't really give a I got my wife, I got, you know, my business, I have my martial art that keeps me fit and helps me deal with stress, you know. I have a lot of things that I can do with my time. I could read a book, I could work on a new idea, something that I'm trying to develop, you know. If somebody's just going to be there for the sake of being there, I mean, you got to dead that shit real quick. You know, you want to just be strictly focused on, you know, like I said, people who genuinely care what's going to happen to you loyalty, people who have ambition, who can bring something to the conversation. Like sometimes it's hard because I do have people in my life that I like a lot. And like we have great debates when we see each other, but it's like, bro, I, I don't even have time for those people lately. I'm just so focused on trying to achieve my goals, you know? And you know, if I don't have time for people who I like and who are positive, then I for damn sure don't have time for some bull who, who ain't talking about shit or who's talking man wants drama, you know? I don't got time for that. I'm way too busy traveling the world and living the life that I want to live. So you need to cut that dead weight quick. What do you think of when you think of Albania? I think of opportunity. I think of a country that's open. I think of a country that wants long stay expats, that wants people to come and invest, wants new ideas, and is looking towards the West. I think that Albania is a beautiful country with incredible landscapes that can offer a very comfortable lifestyle at a very reasonable price. We will help navigate your journey to becoming an expat in Albania. We're working with some of the top lawyers. We can help establish businesses. We can help you get your residency. We can help you get real estate. We can arrange almost any contact that you might need for the process of moving here in almost any city in the country. We will simplify the process. We'll make it a lot easier for you to move to a country that maybe in the past would have been more of a challenge. With our help, it's gonna be a walk in the park. Brush your face and wash your teeth, son. Hey, what's up? I'm Dee from Canada. Hook up with the New York Nomad if you want a smooth ride into Vietnam or any Southeast Asian countries. Hey, my name is Aaron. Get in contact with the New York Nomad. If you want to get into Vietnam, hit them up. They'll get you in securely and professionally. Yo, this is Uncle Hollywood. I'm telling you right now, the New York Nomad got me a job. He's legit. Hit him up. Check him out. New York Nomad set me up in Vietnam. <laughs> Yo, my man got me a job. Come to Vietnam. Hey, what's up, guys? You thinking about coming to Vietnam? You're not sure where to start. You've heard a lot of things online. You don't know what's true. You don't know what's not. We offer a consulting service where we help you get on your feet in Vietnam. We give you advice on negotiating contracts with employers. We help you with real estate agents, visa agents that are reliable and that you can trust. We help you get started in this amazing country and get on your feet. We help you get into different opportunities that might be more difficult for you if you were just landing in the country on your own. And we help you avoid a lot of the, the pitfalls and problems that you could have as a newcomer here. We provide you with reliable job recruiters, visa agents, real estate agents, and advice. If you guys are thinking about coming to Vietnam, hit us up for a consultation. We'll help you get started, help you get on your feet, and hopefully you'll love Vietnam as much as we do.